Hi, today I'll be discussing our research on the thermal annealing of implanted Californian fission tracks in monazite. Fission track thermochronology is an analytical technique used to reconstruct the low temperature thermal history of rocks over geological time. So far, the technique has been largely developed and routinely used on the minerals apatite, zircon, and titanite. Conventional fission track dating relies on the thermal neutron irradiation of samples to obtain an estimate of uranium-238 content via the formation of uranium-235 fission tracks. Conventional annealing studies are also dependent on neutron-induced uranium-235 fission tracks to assess their stability over geological timescales. These methods have hindered the development of monazite as it is unsuitable for radiation due to the presence of the rare earth element, gadolinium. This is because it has an extremely high thermal neutron capture cross-section of nearly 49,000 bands, which can ca cause substantial nuclear heating during irradiation and can even melt the grains. But what we do know about fission tracks and monazites based on the limited amount of studies that have been performed is that they all suggest that monazite fission tracks anneal at lower temperatures than apatite. So with the development of alternative thermal annealing experiments using implanted iron tracks, as well as laser ablation inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry and electron microprobe analysis for determining uranium concentrations, this has opened up the door for monazite to be assessed. So the material used in the study of uh, monazite crystals from the hard called granite diorite. And the first thing we did was we pre annealed the grains to remove any pre existing radiation damage. And then we made uh, a bunch of mounts with grains um, oriented parallel to the 100 phase and also perpendicular to the crystallographic C axis. So you can see here uh, a typical monazite crystal with the A, B, and C axes, and these are the Miller indices. So for grains that have been oriented parallel to the, um, the 100 phase, uh, this is the plane that we're uh, analyzing. And for grains that were uh, oriented perpendicular to C-axis, this is the plane that we're analyzing. Then each mount was um, irradiated with Californian fission tracks for about seven hours. And these were implanted at about 30 degrees to these polished surfaces. So after the grains were irradiated, they were removed from the epoxy mounts and annealed in a block heater over 1, 10, 100, and 1,000 hour schedules at temperatures between 30 and 400 degrees Celsius. And each one of these uh, annealing schedules had a set of control samples, one for the parallel orientation and one for the perpendicular orientation. After the grains were annealed, they were then remounted and then etched in six molar hydrochloric acid for 75 minutes at 90 degrees Celsius. So here you see an image of implanted and well etched California fission tracks in monazite. And you'll notice that they're all oriented in the same direction. And this is because of the collimated nature of the iron particles coming from the single point source. Digital images of the etched grains were then uh, captured using a Zeiss microscope that was interfaced with the control PC using TrackWorks software. And then for each experiment and orientation, 500 track length measurements were performed um, using a fast track software. We also measured the diameters of the track etch pits to make an estimation of the amount of surface lowering during bulk etching. Then by using the, the true track length as well as the diameters of the track etch bits, we're able to calculate an equivalent confined fission track length. So the results of the study show that the average length for the unannealed control samples across all analyses is about 10.6 microns. Here we have a graph of track length reduction normalized to the mean length of the unannealed control samples. So here on the x-axis, you have temperature in degrees Celsius. Um, on the y-axis, you have track length reduction. And each one of these points here represents a single annealing experiment that has been averaged across the parallel and perpendicular surfaces. So the normalized lengths start at one, which is the control sample, 
and they reduce to about 0.5 or half the original length before dropping abruptly to zero by the next heating step. In all annealed samples, the mean equivalent confined track length was always less than that of the unannealed control samples, which means over the temperature range studied, no conditions have been identified where the tracks are totally stable, even for experiments conducted at 30 degrees Celsius. Here we have a graph showing normalized track length reduction for one and 1,000 hour experiments across parallel and perpendicular surfaces. So once again, we have temperature in degrees Celsius um, on the x-axis. On the y-axis, we have normalized track length reduction. And again, each one of these points uh, represents a kneeling experiment for each orientation. So as we can see, we can, uh, as kneeling progresses, the mean track lengths are reduced and become anisotropic with crystallographic orientation which means that tracks that have been implanted on surfaces oriented perpendicular to the C-axis uh, ha always have a shorter mean track length than those implanted on the 100 face. So then once we've got these results, we can then put them in an Arrhenius plot of log time versus inverse absolute temperature. On the so on the bottom X-axis, we have temperature in Kelvins on top, uh, x-axis we have the corresponding temperatures in degrees Celsius and then on the y-axis we have log time. Each one of these points represents um, a single annealing experiment that has been averaged across both surface orientations and the normalized track length values are calculated relative to the average length of the unannealed control samples which is 10.6 microns. In the plot, the normalized track length values in a particular range are represented by the same symbol and exhibit linear trends with positive correlation. Then to extrapolate the laboratory annealing results to geological time scales, an empirical model is, is presented today, which has been used to determine a functional form of fission track annealing kinetics. So here is the Fanny model from Laslett which shows the full data set with contours of equal length reduction extrapolated to geological timescales. You can see that the, the, the model has slopes of contour lines that change with the degree of annealing. So based on these positions of the, of the contours at, at these geological timescales, the model shows that a significant reduction in the etchable lengths of the fission tracks takes place at ambient and lower temperatures suggesting that monocyte is particularly sensitive to low temperature thermal annealing. We then see, then see considerably more track shortening occurring in levels that would be of the shallow upper crust between temperatures of about 50 to 160 degrees over the same time period. And then we see complete annealing of the fission tracks occurring very rapidly when the equivalent confined track length reduction decreases below 0.5. So from analyzing these contours, we can then constrain the temperature range for in which the fission tracks partially anneal over geological time, known as the partial, partial annealing zone. So in this study, we've defined uh, the, temperature, the lower temperature limit of the monazite partial annealing zone as, uh, with a track length reduction of 0.95, since a track length reduction at the 5% level should be clearly detectable under the microscope. And the higher temperature limit um, has been defined as a track length reduction of 0.5, which is, corresponds to the final rapid fading of tracks observed in the study. So by extrapolating the model equations to geological timescales with parameters derived from the annealing experiments, the Fanning model shows the estimate of a monocyte partial annealing zone over a 10 million year heating duration of about negative 71 to 143 degrees Celsius. So take into account the, uh, the fission track closure temperature to be approximately in the middle of the monazite partial annealing zone. The predicted closure temperature for the monazite fission track system is in range between about 45 to 25 degrees Celsius over about one to 10 million years. So to summarize, it is clear that Fission tracks in monazite had the lowest thermal stability of any mineral 
so far studied, suggesting that this system has the potential for use as a new ultra-low temperature thermochronometer. Thank you. <laughs>